Hey guys, welcome and today we will discuss about basics of strengths of material. So I will be talking about stress, strain and different elastic constants like modulus of elasticity, modulus of rigidity, Poisson's ratio, bulk modulus and also we will talk about strain energy, resilience and proof resilience. So let's start. First, we will discuss about important mechanical property and first property is elasticity. Suppose we have a material and if we are applying force in this material and after application of force, this material get deformed and when force is removed, then this material return back to its original position. This material is called elastic material and, by, and the property by which it is returning back to its original position is known as elasticity. Just observe the image. In the image, you can observe a ball and a rod, which is elastic rod here. And when this ball falls on the rod, we can observe that rod is first deforming. And when ball goes away from rod, that is when load is removed, then rod is coming back to its original position. So this rod is elastic and property by which it is returning back is known as elasticity. Now next property is plasticity. Suppose we have an object, this is our object and if I am applying force and it get deformed after application of force. Now when I remove force from this material, then the material does not come back to its original position. That is this position and this position is not same that is it is deformed. This type of material is called plastic and the property by which it is getting deformed and, and it is not coming back to its original position is known as plasticity. Next property is ductility. Ductility means any material, suppose this is our material and if we can change this material into wire by application of force, then this property is called ductility. Next property is brittleness. Suppose we have a material and by application of force or any pressure in this material, this material breaks. That is, they cannot be changed into wired form. So this type of material is called brittle material. Example of brittle material is glass. An example of ductile material is gold, copper wire, etc. Next property is known as malleability. Now malleability is a property in which a material can be changed into thin sheets. That is by application of pressure in all sides, we are changing this material into sheets. So this is known as malleability. Next property is toughness. Toughness is defined as property of a material which enable it to absorb energy without fracture. Suppose this is our material and if a force is applied in this, and the energy absorbed by this material before fracture is known as toughness. Now let's understand this with a graph. Suppose I am drawing graph between load that is P and elongation that is del. EL is our elastic limit and F is our fracture point. So suppose this is our material and if I am applying any type of load say I am applying load P and after application of load this is fracture point of the material means after this point the material get fractured so the energy absorbed by material till this point is known as toughness next we will discuss hardness hardness is ability of a material to resist indentation or surface abrasion let's understand this suppose we have a material and if i am applying any type of load in it so there is no surface cracks there is no indentation in this material and there is no abrasion in this material that is suppose this is our material and if i am throwing if i am leaving a heavy ball to fall in this material then there will be no depression form here there will be no cracks in this material if no crack is formed then this material is hard material so hardness is the ability of a material to resist surface abrasion to resist cracks to resist indentation next property which we will discuss is strength suppose we have a material and if i am applying a force say a compressive force and if the internal 
resisting force are developed if we apply force in a material then internal resisting forces are developed then this force they generally resist the deformation if i will apply force in this material suppose this is our material if i apply force then this material should deform like this means it should deform like this but what is happening internal resisting forces are developing and it is resisting this force in opposite direction in this direction then this internal resisting force is known as strength of that material here we will talk about simple stress and strain first let's define what stress means suppose we have a material and it is subjected to a force f this is our external force when an external force act on this object then a resisting force is set up within the component so these are resisting force which act this side so the internal resistance force per unit area acting on material is called stress so these internal forces divided by area is known as stress and it is having unit as newton per meter square now we will classify stress so we classify stress as simple or direct stress indirect stress or combined stress and in simple and direct stress we have three classification first is tension which we can say tensile force second one is compression or compressive force and third one is shear when we talk about indirect stress then we have two categories one is our bending and second classification is torsion now we will understand direct stress if a force acts on an object directly that is if force acts normal to the cross sectional area then that force is known as direct force and that force will develop a stress which will be direct stress so let's understand this with an example so you can observe in this image that force is applied directly to this surface if you will see this cross section then this cross section is this and force is acting perpendicular to it so this force will develop a stress which is which is direct stress so we will define direct stress as ratio of force to area now you can observe here the tendency of this force is to elongate this surface so tendency of this force is to elongate this surface so this force is known as tension and if you will observe this force then this is compressing this object means it will shorten the object so this object force is known as compressive force that is compression now we will talk about third case which is called shear suppose this is our surface and if force acts parallel to the cross section area then these force will develop a stress which is known as shear stress and the force which acts parallel to surface is known as shear force and they will develop shear stress so we can define shear stress as shear force per unit area so we use this symbol tau and this is our force that is shear force and this is area of cross section that is this cross section where shear force is acting strain is defined as ratio of change in length to initial length so let's see what this means this is our surface in which a force f is applied this is length and suppose t is our width so if we apply this force so this force will elongate the surface it will elongate the surface but it will decrease this t that is our width so it will look like so del l is our increase in length so this is del l and this is our decreased width that is del t both side here also del t so now we will define two type of strain one is linear strain that is this side strain and one is lateral strain that is this reduced cross section as we define strain as change in length by initial length so both side length is changing that is here it is increasing and here it is decreasing so we define linear strain as 
ratio of change in length by initial length. So this is our linear strain. We can directly put this value in it. That is our initial length is L and change in length is del L plus del L. Now we will define lateral strain. So similarly, we can say it is change in lateral length to initial lateral length. That is ratio of change in lateral length to initial lateral length. That is del T. So this is how we define strain. Now we define mathematically strain as ratio of change in length to initial length. So this is our change in length and this is our original length. Now we will define shear strain. So this is our object and this is our shear force that is force which is acting tangentially to our surface. Now when this force acts to this surface then this layer will slide forward so it will look like So it looks like this. That is after application of force, this upper surface has slided. So I have combined the figures. So del L is our displaced length of the sides and phi is our angle, strain angle. So we define shear strain as phi. So phi is our shear strain. So we write tan phi as del L by L. So L is our this length and del is this. Del L is this length as shown. So we write shear strain as del L by L for as we know for small angle tan phi is equal to phi. So this is our shear strain. Now we will define Poisson ratio it is defined as ratio of lateral strain to longitudinal strain and it is denoted by symbol mu or 1 by m. So we write it mathematically as negative of lateral strain to longitudinal strain. As ratio cannot be negative. So lateral strain and longitudinal strain should be of opposite sign. Just remember the figure which we have shown you in strain. So I will use the same figure for finding out value of poison ratio. So this is our figure here. Del T show our lateral side and del L is our longitudinal side. So we will write poison ratio as ratio of lateral strain to longitudinal strain. So expression is. So this is our lateral strain that is this strain and this is our longitudinal strain that is this strain. So here we have two del L. So we have added this to get two del L and here also we have two del T. So we have added this, added this to get this. So you can also check that mu should be positive for making this positive value of this should be negative. So we will put negative value because here cross section is decreasing this side and length is increasing. So poison ratio is a positive quantity. Now we will define volumetric strain. So it is ratio of change in volume to initial volume. So this is how we write volumetric strain change in volume by initial volume. Hooke's law states that stress is directly proportional to strain up to elastic limit. So we write it mathematically as and here E is modulus of elasticity. So we can write E as ratio of stress by strain, ratio of stress to strain. Or we can write E as stress is our force by area and strain is change in length by initial length. Or we can write del L by L as F by EA or we can write del L as FL by AE. So we can use this in numerical for finding elongation or change in length. Now we will learn about thermal stress and thermal strain. We know that if a material is heated then it expands that is size increase and if material is cooled then it contracts that is size of material decrease. So we will use this principle for finding out thermal stress and thermal strain. 
so we have observed that change in length is directly proportional to initial length and change in length is directly proportional to change in temperature so we write expression as del l is our change in length is equal to alpha is our proportionality constant l is our initial length and del t is our change in temperature now i will directly write expression for thermal stress and thermal strain this is our change in length that is del l so thermal stress is written as young's modulus that is modulus of elasticity multiplied by alpha and alpha is called coefficient of thermal expansion and t del t is our change in temperature so this is the expression for thermal stress now if we write strain we write strain as ratio of del l by l so here del l is alpha l delta t by l so strain comes out to be alpha multiplied by delta t so this is expression for strain now we will learn about elastic constant so it is defined as those factor which determine the deformation produced by a given stress system acting on a material so let's define certain factor now first one is modulus of elasticity it is defined as ratio of longitudinal stress to longitudinal strain so this is the expression for modulus of elasticity now we will define modulus of rigidity it is defined as ratio of shear stress to shear strain next constant is bulk modulus we define bulk modulus as direct stress by volumetric strain that is ratio of direct stress to volumetric strain so these are our elastic constant now we will learn about relation between elastic constant that is modulus of elasticity modulus of rigidity bulk modulus and poisson's ratio so first relation is and second relation is third relation is and the fourth and last relation is so these are our required relations so we will now learn about strain energy it is the ability of a material to absorb energy when it is strained so we write it as so this is strain energy mathematical expression here p is the applied load delta is our elongation that is increase in length and t is applied torque and theta is twist by the torque now we will define resilience resilience is the ability of a material to absorb energy in the elastic region where it is strained so when we talk about strain energy we have said that it is ability of a material to absorb energy when it is strained but when we talk about resilience we say ability of a material to absorb energy in the elastic region so we are talking about elastic region here so we give this by expression area under p delta curve that is half into p into delta so we generally talk about elastic limit here so don't forget this elastic limit in resilience that is elastic region next we will talk about proof resilience proof resilience is the maximum energy absorbing capacity of a material in the elastic region so you have to remember in resilience we only say energy absorbing capacity in in elastic region but in proof resilience we say maximum energy absorbing capacity in elastic region thank you guys for watching this video and if you want more videos then you can just click on your screen where many videos are being shown and you will directly go to my channel and you can watch their more videos and if you have any doubt you can comment me in my comment section and see you in my next video